I wanted to move the discussion onto the topic of boost control inside a Cybex BCU. Now this topic is immensely complicated. We can go down many different tangents, but I wanted to do the first video as just a general overview of one of the more advanced setup options that's available to you. And I've got a sequence up here in the, in the screen where we're looking at an actual bit of recorded data out of a car a calibration sheet to allow us to select the right size spring to use inside our wastegate, the percentage of what we call phase and anti-phase control, and looking at the target manifold absolute pressure and the turbine inlet pressure. Now, these components you need to know. Without knowing these, there's no way of accurately being able to, on the bench or in the vehicle, work out what you need to do in the setup. It's contrary to what a lot of people say that it's impossible to do and you can't calculate it and that's why manufacturers say you have to do it in real world. All of that's bullshit. You can actually work these out. 25 years ago I designed some springs for an independent contract for a customer. They manufactured the springs. We knew the turbine inlet pressure. We knew the target manifold pressure we wanted. And the things did exactly what we designed them to. So you can work it out, but you do need to know the basics. You need to know the area ratios you're working with in the closed side, or we call it the anti-phase capsule of the wastegate, the open side or the phase areas. And I've listed these for people's benefit inside this worksheet. There's no secrets. I'm happy to share it for you. Once you know these, you know the duty cycle that you're going to apply to the phase and the antiphase. So the phase is the open side, the antiphase is the closed side. It's real easy then to transfer this into a force and we can we decided to represent it as a weight here rather than talking in newtons because a lot more people sort of you know understand that if you love imperial units then just multiply this by 2.205 and you can get it in pounds if that makes you more aroused. Why do we want to do it this way? You go, oh, it's too complicated. Just slap a four-port valve on it and, and Bob's your uncle. Well, a four-port valve is shit. A four-port valve is extremely sensitive. It does not allow you independent control of the phase and antiphase components. There's situations where you want to control this independently to this to give you a stable boost curve and what we have in a phase and any phase is an unrivaled stability in the boost curve which is far superior to any type of four port valve there's no need for carbon dioxide monoxide fuck knows what these cunts use you don't need to use any of that bullshit all you need is a proper three port valve set up independent on each side and a good control strategy inside the ECU and it'll do what you want. So to finish this, th this is actually a real world calculated example of using the smallest available uh, spring pressure that Teal manufactures, so it's basically a small blue inner spring that develops or will allow you to run with 100% phase control, no anti-phase, so this is just bled to atmosphere up the top of roughly 5.4 psi. When we use this control method, we can not put anything to the underside of the wastegate, but critically, we can vent it. So we allow free movement inside here. And the antiphase side, we can do full control, full pressure control to the top. And in this case, we only need to put 60% duty or 60% of that available pressure into the top to give us a net zero, which means that the valve will stay in the closed position and we can run 3600 millibar, which is you know, a, a very high level of boost pressure for a very, very small preload spring in the top part of the wastegate. And that is the reason why we use phase and antiphase control. We get unrivaled stability in the, in the boost pressure and we get an extremely large control range available to us.